Ave Maria. In St. Luke's Gospel, the evangelist tells us about our Lord's visit, or rather his journey through Jericho. And St. Luke tells us, As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging, and hearing a multitude going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, and he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. St. Luke frequently speaks about our Lord passing by. And even today our Lord passes by. Because the moment of grace is transient. It's for a brief moment. And so we must take the opportunity, we must take the chance when we feel the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for us to call out to him. Otherwise, he will pass by. In fact, in the book of the Apocalypse, we read exactly that, that the Lord knocks. And if, we, if the person opens, then he comes in, he enters. But if not, he moves on. In this case, as our Lord is going to Jericho, there is a blind man by the road. And most of the human race is blind in as much as we do not see the invisible things of God. Yet St. Paul tells us that we should because the invisible things are seen by that which is visible. In other words, from what is created, we can deduce something about the Creator. If we fail to do this, then the Apostle says God abandons us and then we fo follow the desires of our hearts. And perhaps this is exactly what is happening in our world, because those who ought to see do not see, and they follow the vain imaginings. So much so that there is a reluctance to, to defend the Christian faith. On the contrary, the Christian faith is made to be even less than any other faith. And we see that continually happening. And so the Lord himself is blasphemed as a result. <clears throat> as our Lord is passing by, the crowd is following him. And the blind man sitting by the roadside has the tumult, he has the multitude. He asks, what is all of this noise about? And he's, they, told, they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Notice what the crowd themselves say, <clears throat> that he is passing by. And he immediately cries out. They said, Jesus of Nazareth, he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. To whom do we ask, of whom do we ask mercy, but of God himself? And so the man, the blind man, He's able to discern that, that the person who is passing by is indeed God. Jesus, son of David, he declares his human nature as well. Jesus, that is Savior, he calls out to the Savior who is the son of David, a man, yet who is the son of God, have mercy on me. And we're told that Jesus stopped. 
The crowd, however, tell the blind man to be quiet. But what does he do? He calls out all the louder. He is rebuked, but he shouts out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And this is exactly what we should be doing in the time in which we live in our present age, when indeed the Lord appears to have not only passed by, but to have left us. We should call out to him to have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and commanded them to bring him. And the man is brought. And the Lord asks, what do you want me to do for you? The Lord knows. He surely must know. But he wishes the man, one, to confess his need. And secondly, he wants the multitude to know that the man was in need and that he that he would be healed. This is so strange when we consider the Jewish authorities and their attitude towards our Lord. Our Lord had healed many people and yet they wished to stone him. The Lord himself asked them, why are you stoning me? For what good work are you stoning me? And their response is, we do not stone you for any good work. But because you're only a man, yet you claim to be God. They understood fully what he had said. They, yes, admit, they confess that he is a man. But they refuse to see the divinity hidden in the man. And how could they know that divinity? Because by the created things, we're able to know the uncreated. By the visible things, we are able to know the invisible. And so the very things that our Lord did, these would indicate his divinity, for there are works only God could do. Yet the man who is blind is able to see that much, whereas the authorities who would condemn him for blasphemy do not. (coughs) What do you want me to do for you? And he responds, Lord, let me receive my sight. He expresses plainly, clearly, what his needs are. And we likewise should do exactly the same. Tell him plainly what we want him to do for us. And in this age of darkness, we should certainly ask him to be the light for us in this darkness, to be a light for our path, to help us to walk in the daylight in the midst of darkness. Lord, let me receive my sight. And the Lord said to him, Receive your sight. And immediately he received his sight. This is a divine work. He spoke and it came into being. At the very dawn of creation, he said, let there be light. And there was light. He spoke and it came into being. Let the earth bring forth green things. He spoke and the earth obeyed. Let the waters bring forth the fish. He spoke and the fish appeared and so on. Here he speaks once more, receive your sight. And sight is given to the man. He is able to see. But our Lord is not content with just giving him his sight. He goes on to affirm something else. Your faith has saved you. For he didn't come just to give us sight for the eyes of the body, but rather he, gave, he came to give us the sight of the soul so that we might indeed see the glory of God. So even in this current darkness in which we live, if we ask of him, we will see his light in the darkness with the eyes of our souls. And consequently, our hearts will not be troubled by the uncertainties and the difficulties that surround us this day, and indeed has been with us for the whole year. We're told immediately he received the sight and he followed him. So then we, having seen that the Lord is with us in the darkness, we can certainly follow him, rejoicing and glorifying God. And indeed, when we're we're told, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. So when we are firm in our conviction, when we're certain in what we have seen, when we follow and when we give praise to God, so also we will be a light in this current darkness. Let us ask the 
the Lord Jesus, who is both God and man, who has come into this world as a light that cannot be extinguished, a light which has been placed on the lampstand. Let us ask him to enlighten, especially our leaders. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Amen.